Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Girl Brianna. This channel is about empowering women through technology. So I was recently hanging out at a random library here in Singapore. Well, not a random library. It's actually one of my most favorite libraries. It's called Library at Orchard. Well, anyways, <laughs> that's irrelevant. While I was there, I got inspired to start this Coding with Brianna series. I asked you guys on Instagram if you guys would be interested and a lot of you seemed to and a lot of you seem to be interested. So I thought, why not? This will be fun for me as well as for those of you that asked for it. Which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, my handle is at techgirlbrianna. Go ahead and give me a follow. So as I came up with this idea, I knew I wanted to code something, but what? It's kind of like if you want to write a song, but you don't know what song to write. Or if you want to write a book, you don't know what to write it about, right? So I was thinking and thinking, and then I decided, well, why don't I just start coding something? Maybe that'll inspire something. And then I, yeah, I just couldn't think of anything again. So then I was like, oh, why don't I just take a little lesson online? I tend to get a lot of my inspiration for my videos through there. So I went on codecademy.com and I actually renewed my pro subscription because I used to use that all the time, but then I stopped for a while because I was super busy with the coding bootcamp and applying for classes and all that. Um, but I'm glad I renewed my subscription because I discovered this section that literally what I was looking for and it's called the practice section and it gives you a bunch of little things that are hands-on to practice on and I was thinking oh that'd be cool I can show you guys how to do it from start to finish but then I also realized that the majority of my viewers have never coded a line of code in their life so I thought that maybe I would just film my progress and showing you guys along coding through Code Academy's practice to code that website to them, or code that project. Sorry, that's not making sense. I'll just show you guys. By the way, if you want to follow along with me and do this along with me, you'll have to sign up for the pro subscription, unfortunately. That's why I renewed mine. That's something I just want you to keep in mind. So I decided to just do the very first one, which is the fashion blog, because fun fact, I used to be a fashion blogger a really long time ago, but over the years, as I've changed as a person, I'm not, not so much into fashion blogging like I am into technology and wellness and traveling. I used to own a fashion blog a long time ago and if you saw, if you just saw my site, you would cringe because it, uh, yeah, I, I did not really know how to code back then. I thought I knew how to make things good in CSS, but apparently I didn't. And it's just really cringy. <laughs> it kind of reminds me when I first learned how to do my makeup and hair, and I hate looking at those photos of me from the past because I cringe so much. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel with like the first 20 websites I've ever made. <laughs> Well, anyways, let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to my computer. So I'm sharing my screen with you. I'm under the practice section for Codecademy Pro, right? Okay, so we are going to do the fashion blog, which I think will be pretty fun. Hopefully for my girly coders out there, you find this kind of exciting, but with the fashion blog business blowing up, this is actually a good way to maybe earn a little bit of money as a freelancer. So so when I move back to the States, I think I might freelance as a fashion blog coder because you know there is definitely a market for that and trust me, there are plenty of websites that need fixing and there are plenty of fashion bloggers that make quite a bit of money and investing in a site that is nice and aesthetically pleasing and has a nice flow and layout is actually really crucial for their business. Okay, let's get started. Objective, introduction to HTML, fashion blog. Your friend Isa is a budding fashion blogger and she asks you to build her a new website just in time for New York Fashion Week. Love it already. Use your new HTML knowledge to create the underlying structure of the blog. Make sure to include plenty of pictures, links, links, lists, and other HTML elements that you've learned so that her fans have plenty to read. You can view a completed project and see how it compares to your work. Oh, so it seems like someone already did a project walkthrough video, but oops, I did not know that. <laughs> uh, and now I'm kind of doing one, but this is not a tutorial video. This is to not teach people how to do it. This is just me, a normal computer science student, attempting to do this 
real life kind of real life experience of creating a fashion blog for my so-and-so fake friend called Isa. So, I mean, why not? This will be fun. Okay, so this is how Isa's website looks like. You can see the content in here, but there is just no styling at all. So I'm actually kind of shocked. Why is there no styling? Is this just for HTML? Like we're not doing any CSS? Ugh. What? Are you kidding me? Well, we are going to change that guys. We're going to add a little bit of CSS in here because who wants to go to a fashion blog website that looks like this? Let's be real. I mean, yes, you have the content and the content is good, I guess, but come on. This is so boring. You would think that just like your website, like what is this? The nineties guys? No, I don't think so. Oh, Cool. Okay, so we have some tasks, right? Perfect. So here's where we do the coding, and then here's where you see the final result. That's why I like about Code Academy is that if you want to test and try things, it's really easy to just do it in their machine. So to start, add the doc type HTML declaration is the very first line in the code at the top of the index.html file. You know what? I just copy and paste because I am lazy. So that's always the very first line. And then we start with the opening and closing HTML brackets, right? There we go. Cool. And there's also this little section here. If you ever get stuck on a task, you know, you can always hit stuck, get hint, and it gives you a little hint just in case if you're stuck. Okay. And then below the HTML opening tag, add a head element below the head element, add the body element. I can just go ahead and just do this part really fast because this is all very basic for me, but I know for some of you it's maybe not. So you want to make sure it's nested, by the way. Every time you have tags within tags, you basically have to have them tabbed over. So that way they're re easy to read. When you have tags within tags and then tags outside tags within tags and tags all over the place, you want to be able to read that. Okay. And then within the head tags, add the title element. Okay. The title is where you'll put the title of the website. Like for example, every day with ISA, that's what's in the title tags. So whatever's in the title tag, whatever text you put in there will display on this tab here. Oh, yep. Title the website every day with ISA. I got ahead of myself. Perfect. Directly below the body tag, add the H1 that says an insider guide to NYFW. Below that, add a H2 tag that says getting tickets and picking the shows. Below that, I add another H2 tag that says dressing for the shows. So the body tag is what you actually see on the website. So everything that's in the body tag is here. And everything that's in the head tag is what you don't necessarily see on the actual page, it's page itself, like the actual meat of the website. So there are a total of six header tags. Uh, the first one is the largest, and then H6 is the smallest. I always start by putting what tags I want to do because it makes it easier for me to nest. I call it creating the skeleton of the website. That's just something I came up with. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. So we need to do two H2 tags and one H1. Okay, perfect. Um, now let's add the filler is what I call it. Yeah, there we go. Actually, no quotations. Don't worry if it goes to a different line. That's only because it doesn't have space on this side. But if I drag it, oh, there we go. Yeah, so that's actually on the same line, right? But then if I condense it, then you can actually see like line seven will all of a sudden be spaced. So don't worry, it's still on the same line. It's just the way that this is all laid out. Cool. All right, that was pretty easy, right? I love copy and pasting here. We're just setting things up. And if you're just curious to see how it looks like now, because actually we have some meat now, we have some content. So if you hit save, I think if you hit save and then, yeah, there we go. So uh, the H1 tag is this, right? An insider's guide to NYFW. Of course, the text will be larger than H2. And as it goes down to H6, the text keeps getting smaller and smaller. But if you want a specific size that you want your text to be, well, okay, we'll actually get into that later. I'm not going to get into CSS quite yet. Right now, we're just working on the meat and the skeleton of the page. Here's Isa's first dispatch from Fashion Week. Let's add a blog post between the H1 and first H2 tag, add a P tag that says, okay, so I'm gonna copy this and then we're going to add a paragraph tag. That's what the P tag is. <sighs> One thing about Code Academy's code editor 
is that I'm used to it being more like sublime text, which is the code editor I use. And so I'm used to my little shortcuts that I came up with, like little hotkeys I came up with. So when they're not working, I get frustrated and be like, what? I have to type out the tag. I can't just hit tab. As you get more experience with coding, you don't actually need to type out all of these tags. Like you can end up just typing like the first letter and just hitting tab. It's a little bit frustrating for me because I keep actually hitting tab when I'm not supposed to. Um, okay, so let's look at the site again. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, we're not going to read it because that's not important. Um, okay, and then between the first and second H2 tags, let's add another paragraph to the post using another paragraph tag. Okay, so between the two H2s, which are right here, here. Let's add another paragraph tag. Okay. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and not read it because I am lazy. I'm a very lazy coder, by the way, but most coders I've met are pretty lazy with their coding. It's not lazy. I just call it lazy. I just like to take shortcuts. There's nothing wrong with taking shortcuts. Why well, take the long way in life, right? After the last H2 tag, add the final paragraph that says blah, blah, blah. We're going to add another paragraph tag after this one. Yes. Cool. All right. Okay, number eight says, of course, this wouldn't be a fashion blog without some images above each paragraph Add a image tag and set its source to be one of the links. Okay, so this is where I'm going to show you guys how a self-closing tag and attributes within a tag works. Okay, so above each paragraph. Okay, let's go to the first paragraph. We're going to add an image. So an image tag just looks like this. It's self-closing. So it wouldn't look like this. So... Yeah, don't do this. This is not how it works. You have to do it like this first line here. So the image has nothing so far. So if you save it, yep, nothing, no image because I didn't put a source attribute. So SRC stands for source. So to write an attribute of a tag, you write the little code for the attribute, which is SRC. That's just one of many attributes. There's so many you can do. You can do alt, you can do um, like this sized width like you could do some inline css if you want but um in this case we're just gonna stick to what this is saying so this is the url of the image let's take a look at how it looks like okay so that's how the image looks like that's the image they provided obviously you can put whatever image you want but i'm just gonna do it the one that code academy provided cool so that's the image source so we have the image tag and then that's the link for the source right you can either do a link or you can do a local directory i mean there are lots of different ways but most of the time you put a link so so that way it works on websites, right? Okay, so there's the image, woohoo! We're making progress, guys. It's starting to look more like a really outdated fashion blog, but you know what, it's, it's working out. Okay, so now we need to add this image. So we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste because we're taking shortcuts, guys. Go ahead and do that with me, if you are. Okay, and let's copy and paste this, cool copy this again put it above the last paragraph tag cool let's save it and check that out woohoo guys it's looking really good let's tick that off okay we're on number nine your first blog post is complete now let's add an image of isa so her readers get to know her below the opening body tag add an image tag with the following source okay so let's copy this um, below the body tag so at the top of the page okay we're going to add another self-closing image tag with the source attributes and then the link i just copied so let's see oh there's isa the fashion blogger okay and then below the image tag add Add an h3 that says by isabel rodriguez one day ago okay the text that's in the h3 tag should be slightly smaller than the h2 so let's see if that's true there it is it's a little bit smaller than this h2 right cool so number 11 isa wants her readers to know that she's written a lot more than one post let's make a list of some related blog posts beneath the last paragraph add an h4 tag that says related content underneath that header tag create an unordered list okay so we're doing two things here we're making an h4 tag like a heading and then uh, we're or kind of like a heading and then um, we're creating an unordered list okay so where do we do that beneath the last paragraph this last paragraph right here okay we're gonna do an h4 which should be slightly smaller than the h3 needs to say related content and now we will do an unordered list so it goes inside the opening and closing brackets will be a ul that stands for for unordered list. There's our unordered list. And now we have to create list items. So this is where we're gonna be doing a lot of nesting. 
So to do list items, you need to do li. Make sure to close that. So let's see, how many unordered lists are we gonna make? I'm just gonna skip ahead. Okay, it should have four items. Okay, let's copy and paste a few more times. Now I'm going to copy and paste this content inside the list items. And I'll show you guys how that looks like in just a second. Let's save that and check it out. Oh, here it is. Looks good, right? Number 13, let's get ISIS blog connected to the rest of the web. In the first paragraph, turn NYFW into a link and have it go to this Wikipedia. Okay, I'm just going to put it in a, a tag, which stands for anchor tag. So this is where you can create links. So you put href, which is kind of like source and image. It's kind of same idea. And then after the href, you put the path where you want it to go to. So in this case, we're gonna put it into this Wikipedia link that I copied and pasted. So if you save it, and then if you click on it, there we go, it went to the New York Fashion Week page. Also to make sure that it includes the target attribute with um, as blank. That way you don't actually leave the site because obviously Isa wants you guys to stay on her fashion blog. So that way it just goes to a new tab rather than exit her site. So let's test it out. Oh, it worked. Okay, cool. We are making progress guys. Okay. Isa wants to make sure that her friends can get in touch with her. At the bottom of your body, add a new div, set its ID contact inside the div, create a new paragraph tag and put the following information inside of it. Cool guys, we're gonna do a little bit of div tags. Just wondering when we'll do something a little bit more than just, just the basic tags. Okay, I'm gonna add a div tag, do a closing div tag. Okay, and then we're going to set its ID to contact. I'm not I'm not gonna get into what IDs mean, but you're basically naming the div tag to whatever you wanted to call it uh, by doing it that. So if you ever need to reference to it later, like in a cascading style sheet, then you would uh, reference it with either an ID or a class. I would recommend just taking some lessons instead of learning through me because I'm not a teacher and I'm not the best to explain it. Okay, and then inside the div, we need to create a paragraph tag. Okay, so let's nest that. Okay, and then we need to put this contact information inside of it. Okay, easy, cool, save. Oh, there we go, it's right there. Okay, and inside the contact div, put a strong opening and closing tags around email, phone, and address. Okay, so we're going to put it all in strong tags. So I'm just going to make this easier so I don't need to write it a million times. That was easy enough. Let me just save that. So if you see what I did there, I just put opening and closing strongs. Yep, there it is. So that way the e Oh, if you don't know what strong does, by the way, strong makes the text font weight to be bold. So you're just making it bold, basically. So I made email bold, phone, and address. Let's make the profile picture a link to the contact section of the web's web page. Find the profile image tag and surround it by opening and closing A tags. In the tag, set the H to contact. So let me show you what's happening here. The reason why we set this ID to contact, that way when you click on her picture, it'll just directly jump you down to this section down below. And you do that by adding an href of contact. So you know what, let me just show you guys instead of talking about it. Okay, so let's go to the image and we'll put it all inside of an A tag. So let me, okay, and then cut that nest it and then paste it. Okay, so now the image is inside the A tag. And now we need to add an href attribute to be hashtag contact. And now it will look for the ID name of contact and it'll go down to this div. So let's test it out. Yep, that worked. If you click on her image, it just jumps straight to the contact section. Pretty awesome. Okay, congrats, you've got the beginnings of a solid fashion blog. Feel free to make modifications and practice your HTML by adding more content. Okay, so I thought that I would have enough time in this video to show you guys how to style it, but I think I will have to leave that for next time because this video is getting already quite long and I didn't want to rush in this video, especially for those of you that are beginners. I wanted to just make sure it was at least fun and easy to follow along with. So I hope this has helped you. Anyways, this is how the site is supposed to look like. And next time we will work on styling it. 
All right, everyone, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to put up the next part of this episode and series on a different day. So make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you know when I put up the next part of the series. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already yet, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone. Thank you.